Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Humphrey Bogart and Greer Garson in The African Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When the Academy Award for Best Performance by an Actor was presented last March, a star who had built his reputation with great performances of gangster parts was among those nominated. And Humphrey Bogart won that award with great acclaim in the unusual role of the intemperate skipper of the African Queen. And as his co-star of this John Huston production, we have beautiful Greer Gosson, another Academy Award winner. Tonight, Miss Gosson will vary her popular role of the charming wife to play a straight-laced spinster. Naturally, Hollywood stars like to change the roles they play. But when it comes to complexion care, there's just one favorite, Lux Toilet Soap. Our most glamorous stars know they can count on daily Lux facials for the finest in complexion care, care that really leaves skin smoother and fresher. So try Hollywood's own beauty care, Lux Toilet Soap. Now, The African Queen, starring Greer Gosson as Rose and Humphrey Bogart as Charlie Allnut. The year is 1914, German East Africa, where Rose Sayer and her brother Samuel spread gospel of God. For more than a year, the missionaries have seen only one white man, Mr. Allnut, pilot of the African Queen, a filthy, dilapidated launch that gasps her way up and down the river. Uh, do we have some more tea, Mr. Allnut? Uh, thanks, miss. I, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> uh, just listen to this stomach of mine. I mean, the way it keeps growling and squealing, the way it sounds, you'd think I had a hyena inside of me. Uh, you, uh, you do take sugar. <laughs> Queer thing, ain't it? Now, what do you suppose makes a man's stomach carry on like this? Uh, you, uh, you're planning to stay overnight, Mr. Orlott? Oh, no, miss. I, I got to get upriver and back to the mine. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, I probably won't be coming around this way for a couple of months. But, uh... But what about our mail? Ah, uh, don't look like there's going to be any mail for a while, on account of the war. War? What war? Where? Europe, miss. Germany and England. England? You really mean war? <laughs> yeah, that's what they tell me, Reverend. But what do you know about it? What's happened? Well, now, let's see. Uh, uh, oh, yes, French are in it, too, and all them, uh, all them little countries. Uh, Austria, Hungary, Belgium. I forget who's with who, though. Oh, brother. Yes, Rose. I know. This is German East Africa. We, we are enemy aliens. <laughs> now, what harm could anybody do the Germans in this God-forsaken place? God has not forsaken this place, Mr. Allnut, as my brother's presence here will bear witness. Oh, no offense, miss. Well, I'll be getting aboard the Queen and shoving off. Uh, thanks for the tea, miss. Goodbye, Mr. Allnut. Goodbye, and thank you. Oh, that... That wretched little man with his foul cigar. His indifference about the war. He's Canadian. Doesn't he realize he's in this too? Shouldn't we try to get to Limbazi? I mean, while we can. The shepherd does not forsake his flock when the wolves are prowling. We shall stay here, Rose. Yes, brother. Yes, of course. Come, dear, come. We shall pray. It's me, miss. I come back a lot sooner than I said. Oh. So the Germans have been here too, eh? Yes. They've, they've been here, Mr. Ornett. When I got to the mines at Limbazi, everything was a shamble. Deserted. Burnt to the ground, just like the village here. Uh, reverend around, miss? My brother is dead. Oh. Oh, well, now, now ain't that awful. 
If them Germans are shoot a Reverend, there ain't nobody safe. They were here three days ago. They didn't shoot him. They... they struck him, and his heart was... was bad, and... Oh, well, that's... He... Oh, that's certainly too bad, miss. That's all I can say. <laughs> I tell you what, miss. You get your things together, we'll get aboard the Queen and clear out. Them Germans are sure to come back. But why? Why should they come back Why, they'll be looking here? for the boat, miss, for the African Queen. She's not much, but they'd give a lot to get their hands on her, you bet. And for what's aboard her, too... Blast and gelatin, tin grub, cylinders of oxygen and hydrogen. Heaps of things I was bringing to the mines. But where could we go? Why, out there on the river, miss. Get behind an island where it's quiet and safe. We can talk about what to do then. I'll get ready. That's the ticket, miss. You bet. You come with me. Well, miss, so far, so good. Here we are, safe and sound, as you might say. A nice shady spot and a nice lonesome spot. But the question is, what next? Quite, Mr. Allnut. Now, we got heaps of grub aboard, 2,000 cigarettes and two cases of gin. Gin? Why, we could sit out the war here if we wanted to. All the comforts are home, miss, including running water. <laughs> Mr. Allnut, we simply cannot remain off a backwater island until the war is oh, over. Can't we now, miss? Well, you've got the map there. Show me a way out and I'll take it. The British will certainly launch an attack. Now, uh, the only question is, which way will they come? Uh, uh, from the sea, maybe. Up the railway to Limbazi. Well, that'll put all them Germans between them and us. Might not our troops come up from the Congo? Miss, miss, look. You see this lake on the map? Yes. That's a hundred miles a lake. And there ain't nothing gonna cross it while the Louise is there. The Louise? She's a hundred-ton steamer, miss, and German. She's boss of the lake because she's got six-pounders, the biggest guns in Central Africa. Oh. Uh, we're in a bit of a fix, miss, whichever way you look at it. This river runs into that lake, does it not? Yes, miss. Yes, it does. But if you got any ideas of getting there in this launch, you better get rid of them. Why? Well, you look at the map, miss. This here is shown it. The Germans have a fort at Shona. They blow us right out of the water, and before that, there's a rapid. Twenty miles of water, that's like it was coming out of a fire hose. But it has been done. Yes, miss, in a canoe, a fellow named Spengler, he almost... Mr. Allnut, uh, what did you say was in those wooden boxes? Them? Them was blasting gelatin, miss. Is it dangerous? <laughs> Bless you, no. That's safety stuff. Takes a detonator to set it off. And what are those long, uh, torpedo-like things? Uh, more stuff for the mine... Them's uh, oxygen and hydrogen cylinders, miss. Mr. Allnut, uh, you're a machinist, aren't you? Uh, kind of a fixer, miss. Jack of all trades, like they say. Could you make a torpedo? How's that, miss? Uh, could you make a torpedo? A torpedo? Ask me to make a dreadnought and do it upright, miss. A torpedo? <laughs> you, you really don't know what you're asking. Why, there just ain't nothing so complicated as the inside of a torpedo. It's got gyroscopes and compressed air chambers. Oh, but they're and... only to make it go, aren't they? Well, we've got the African Queen. How's that, miss? And if we were to, uh, to fill those cylinders with that blasting gelatine and then, uh, then fix them so that they'd stick out over the end of this boat... And then, uh, then if we were to run this boat against the side of a ship, well, uh, well, they'd go off just like a torpedo would, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, miss. Well, then we could, uh, we could point the launch towards a ship, and uh, just before she hit, we could dive off, couldn't we? Sure. Sure, miss. Absolutely, only there ain't nothing to torpedo. Oh, but there is. Is what? The Louisa. The Louisa. Oh, now, don't talk silly, miss. You can't do that. Honest, you can't. I told you before, we can't get down the river. Spangler did. In a canoe. If a German did it, we can do now, it. Not in no launch, we can't. Well, how do you know? You've never tried. Well, I never tried shooting myself in the head, neither. In other words, in other words, Mr. Allnut, you're refusing to help your country in her hour of need. Uh, I wouldn't put it that way. Just how would you put it? Uh, all right, miss. Have it your own way. But don't blame me for what happens. Very well, then. Let's get started. Well, you mean now? Now. 
But there ain't two hours of daylight left, miss. We can go a long way in two hours, Mr. Allnut. But the boiler, the fire's gone out practically. We can't move till we get the old kettle boiling again. Well, you're well stocked with firewood. Do so. Oh, refusing to help your country in an hour of need. Could you make a torpedo, Mr. Allnut? Well, do so, Mr. Allnut. Uh, did you say something, Mr. Allnut? Mean, miss, I, I didn't say nothing, miss. Anything wrong, Mr. Allnut? That's yeah, just this old boiler, miss. She's leaking steam. See? Oh. Uh, why are you kicking the boiler, Mr. Allnut? Feed pump full of rust and scum. She gets clogged up. And that's all you have to do? Just kick it? <laughs> it's knowing how to kick her, miss. She gets peevish now and then, ever since I dropped a screwdriver down the safety valve. Uh, what would happen if you didn't kick it? The whole boiler would blow up. Then why don't you dismantle the safety valve and remove the screwdriver? <laughs> you know, I'm going to do that one of these days. The only reason I haven't up to now is that I kind of like kicking her. She's all I've got. <laughs> well, uh, she, she seems to be operating quite normally now. <laughs> yeah, like I... Like I said, miss, all she needs is a good boot. Well, you ready to call it a day? It's kind of a kind of like a, a lagoon up ahead. It's a real nice place when the bugs ain't too bad. I shan't complain, Mr. Allnut. We have much to be thankful for. <laughs> and that's a fact, miss. It's like they say. It ain't never so bad that it can't be worse. Do you suppose anyone has seen us? Oh, there ain't nobody in these parts, miss, forgetting the beasts of the forest. Kind of... Kind of hot, ain't it? I could do with a drink. I got an extra cup here, miss, if you're gonna have one. Oh, no, no, thank you. Uh, what is it? Uh, gin, miss. Gin. <gasps> uh, something wrong? Uh, no. <laughs> well, if you're worried about there not being enough... Why, there's uh, two full cases aboard. Oh, no, no, please. Well, maybe you'd like a nice cup of tea. Well, thank you. <laughs> you get real service on the African Queen. Hey, see this? Hot water all the time. Uh, out of the boiler? <laughs> It'll taste a little rusty, but then we can't have everything, can we? There you are, miss. Just add the tea to suit your taste like they say on the box. Thank you. Don't mention it. Well, now, you just sit and relax, and after a bit, I'll start thinking about supper. How long have you been out here, miss? In Africa? Oh, almost ten years. You ever get homesick? Well, I, I'm afraid I have been homesick many times. It's Sunday afternoons that I think of most. The peace and the quiet of home. <laughs> On Sunday afternoons, I was always sleeping one off. Sleeping one? Oh. <laughs> uh, what brought you to Africa, Mr. Allnut? Uh, the Zambezi Bridge, miss. A whole boatload of us Canucks came over to work on it. Don't know yet what they wanted a bridge for, but then uh, why did the chicken cross the road? I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I wish I was back, but then I remember how I'd have to be taking orders from somebody while out here. I, well, I'm my own boss. Well, drink your tea, miss. I'll, I'll go fix us some grub. <laughs> now, what do you think you're doing, miss? Well, if I may draw some hot water from the boiler, I'll wash these dishes. Ah, uh, mostly. I, uh, I just hold them over the side and let the current do the washing. If you will forgive me, that's about what I imagine. Cleanliness is next to godliness, eh, miss? Is that so amusing, Mr. Allnut? <laughs> uh, no, miss. Uh, you don't see no crocodiles around, do you? Crocodiles? Uh, no. No, nah, it's too shallow for them. Well, I, uh... I could do with a bath before I turn in. I, I'd i like a bath myself. Well, now, you do the dishes back here and I'll go off the bow. So long as we look, so long as we don't look, it don't matter. Well, how about it, miss? Uh, well, very well, Mr. Allnut. That's the ticket. I won't be a minute, just a slosh or two. Mr. Allnut, 
Mr. Walnut. Right here, miss. How's the water? Oh, no, no, no. Stay just where you are. I... Oh, dear, I, I can't get back into the boat. Well, I'll give you a hand, then. Oh, I've been trying to climb up, but I can't. I'm afraid I, I do need help. Is that blanket still there? Yes, miss. Well, if you will, please... Hold it up in front of you and close your eyes. Well, I just got two hands, miss, and if I hold up the blanket... Oh, then, then just close your eyes. I got them closed, miss. Now, here, you grab my arms. Oh, thank you. Oh, but, but don't you dare move until I say so. Oh, no, miss. I, I bathed in my undergarments. You'll have to wait until I... Oh, it's all right, miss. It's all right. You just say when. Well, you feel better, miss? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I do. Well, now, you better sleep here under the awning, miss, in case it rains. And here's a couple of rugs. There ain't no fleas on them. Uh, where, will, uh, uh, where will you sleep, Mr. Allnut? Me or forward, miss. And if it'll make you feel better, you can hang up one of them tarpaulins, like a kind of a curtain, sort of. Thank you. Good night. I'll turn out the lantern if you're ready, miss. I'm quite ready. Good night, Mr. Allnut. Good night, miss. Boy, I'm sorry I woke you, miss. What are you doing? Oh, I, I ain't doing nothing, miss. Just getting out of the wet. Well, go away this instant. Yes, miss. Uh, Mr. Allnut. Yes, miss? You may come in out of the rain if you wish. Thank you, miss. Uh, miss... Yes. I'm sorry I gave you such a turn. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I didn't realize that you were just... I, how hard it was raining. I won't get near you, miss. There's heaps of room. Good night, Mr. Allnut. Good night, miss. Before we return with Act Two of The African Queen, here's Francis Scully, popular Hollywood commentator. Wasn't it a pleasure, Ken, to meet the famous swimmer Annette Kellerman on your program last week? Oh, yes, indeed, Francis. She's a remarkable woman. No wonder Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer filmed her life story and called it Million Dollar Mermaid. Well, the film looks like a million dollars in gorgeous technicolor with stars like Esther Williams, Walter Pidgeon, Victor Mature, and David Brine. Esther Williams certainly does some sensational routines in those beautiful water ballets. <laughs> oh, and she looks so glamorous, particularly in the famous one-piece bathing suit that shocked Boston in the 1920s. <laughs> <Yes>. Well, <laughs> I thought it was an exceptionally good love story, too, Francis, with both Victor Mature and David Bryan in love with Esther Williams, as she becomes the toast of two continents. <laughs> yes, and Annette Kellerman, Esther Williams, plays an exciting role, filled with glamour and romance in Million Dollar Mermaid. Well, I can't imagine a mermaid more beautiful than Esther Williams, and in Technicolor, her complexion looks like a million dollars. And yet, Ken, Esther Williams' complexion care is one that every girl can use. It's Lux Toilet Soap. Like nine out of ten famous Hollywood stars, Esther's devoted to Lux Soap Care. And when all these famous beauties agree on one complexion soap, you know it must do something wonderful for skin. Must really smooth and freshen your complexion. And that's just what daily Lux Care does. Its skin tonic action helps your skin retain natural moisture. Even dry skin looks fresher, more appealing. And Lux facials take only a minute. You just cream in the rich Lux lather, rinse warm, splash cold, and there your complexion sparkles. Yes, girls, Lux care is simple, but so effective that Lever Brothers Company guarantees it will improve any normal skin. So try these daily Lux Soap facials. See how quickly your skin looks lovelier. Really Lux lovely. Now here's our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of The African Queen, starring Humphrey Bogart as Mr. Allnut and Greer Gosson as Rose. <laughs> it's the following morning, and the African Queen wheezes her way down the river. Mr. Allnut is at the rusty engine, administering with tools 
and frequent kicks of his experienced foot. And now suddenly what he is dreading is upon them. The sluggish river has turned into whirlpools and rapids. Well, miss, how'd you like it? Like it? White water, rapid. Oh, I never dreamed that it... <laughs> I don't blame you for being scared, miss. Ain't nobody in his right mind ain't scared of white water. I was about to say that I never dreamed that any mere physical experience could be so stimulating. Huh? How's that, miss? I've seldom known such excitement. A few times in my dear brother's sermons, when the spirit was really upon him, I felt Well, something... you mean you want to go on? But of course I do. Miss, you're crazy. Oh, I must say, I'm filled with admiration for your skill, Mr. Allnut. Do you suppose that after I practice steering a bit more, that someday I might try? Miss, let me tell you something. Those rapids back there ain't nothing to what's in front of us. Oh, I can hardly wait. But, miss... Oh, I know that I've had a taste of it. I don't wonder that you love boating, Mr. Allnut. Boating? <laughs> Excuse me, miss, I need a drink. Mr. Allnut, if, uh, if something's the matter, please, That's, I must know. It's nothing you'd understand. You're... You're drinking gin again, Mr. Allnut. Yes, miss, I sure am. It's been such a pleasant day up until now. What is it that's that's driving you to drink, Mr. Allnut? All right. I'll tell you. It's all your foolish talk about us going on into the lake, all this crazy talk about the Louisa. Well, we ain't gonna go. But of course we are. What an absurd idea. What an absurd idea. What an absurd idea. Why don't you want to go on? Because of the river and the rapids and then Shona. Shona? Oh, yes, yes. Where the Germans have a fort. Yeah, you're darn right, Shona. Just one bullet and that blasting gelatin missing. We'd be a little bits and pieces. Then we'll go by the fort at night. Oh, no, we won't. Then we'll go by day. We can go on the far side of the river, speeding along just as fast as ever oh, we can. We ain't gonna go speeding along any place. <gasps> you agreed to go. I never did. I never agreed to anything. Mr. Allnut, you are a liar. And what is worse than that? A, a coward. No! <laughs> Cowards yourself. You ain't no lady. No, miss, that's what my poor old mother would say to you. My poor old mother would say to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whose boat is this anyway? I asked John because I was sorry for you. That's what you get for feeling sorry for people. Oh, I ain't sorry for you anymore. You're a crazy, psalm-singing, dried-up old maid. Mr. Allnut, you are drunk. You're not half what I'm going to be, either. <laughs> there was a bold fisherman set sail for Port Pimlico to catch the bold piggy and the gay back. <laughs> Oh, oh, miss. Oh, my head. Oh, have pity, miss. Mr. Allnut, you are still intoxicated. Oh, oh, the gin. That's gin you're pouring into the river. Indeed it is. Oh, you, you don't know what you're doing, miss. I'll perish without a hair of the dog. Look at you, reeling about helplessly. Oh, my head. Oh, my head. I'm warning you, miss. That gin ain't your property. It's no one's property now. Twenty-one empty bottles floating on the waves, and I'm glad. You're a criminal, that's what you are. Oh, I'll die. Then what'll you do? I'll suffer and die, and I'll float on the wave. It's all you're doing, you hear? You did it all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's you. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I look different, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I shaved. Oh, uh, I see you're reading your Bible. Ah, oh, it's a good thing to have a lady aboard, miss. Sets a man a good example, a man alone. Well, he gets to living like a hog. 
and two with me. It's uh, always put things off. But with you, miss, it's business before pleasure every time. <laughs> I, uh, I tell you, it's like an inspiration. And that old engine, I ain't got that old engine so clean in years. Just look at her, miss. Uh, you don't care. Hmm. I only had some clean clothes like you. Now you, why, you could be at high tea. Say, that's an idea, miss. How about a nice little cup of tea? Uh, how's the book? How about reading it out loud? I could do with a little spiritual comfort myself. And you call yourself a Christian. Don't you? Don't you? Huh? You're behaving like an infant. And how are you behaving? You're... You're just plain mean. Man takes a drop too much once in a while. It's only human nature. Nature, Mr. Allnut, is what we're put into this world to rise above. I'm sorry. I apologize for getting so drunk. What more can a man do? Besides, you paid me back. Didn't even leave me a drop. I have a heart, miss. Say something. I don't care what it is, but you gotta say something. So you think it was your nasty drunkenness I minded? Oh, well, what else? You promised me that you'd go down the river. Miss... Miss, listen to me. There's death a thousand times down there. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but don't blame me. Blame the river. You promised. Well, I'm taking my promise back. All right, miss, you win. As the crocodiles will be glad to hear. Down the river we go. Thank you, Mr. Allnut. <laughs> We're making splendid progress, Mr. Allnut. Look over there. Shona? Not yet, miss, but soon over there's a crocodile waiting for his supper. Which side of the river is Shona on? Starboard, miss. But good, then the sun will be in their eyes. But you're worried, aren't you? Oh, not me, miss. I gave myself up for dead back where we started. Well, that noise, what was that? Well, that fort's closer than I thought. They're just letting us know they've sighted us. Their next shot's going to be closer. Their aim's dreadful, isn't it? Their aim will be good enough unless we turn back. Mr. Allnut, I don't want to hear those words again. Yes, miss. Now put your head down. We'll get rifle fire, too, in a minute. Can't we go any faster? I wish you are going to try, miss. And if it's all the same with you, start praying. We've made it! Look, we've made it. Hooray, Mr. Oh, Allnut. we sure put one over on them Germans that time, didn't we, miss? Oh, we showed them, miss. Hip, hip, hooray. Well, was my handling of the boat oh, all better right? better than all right, miss. They were that surprised at seeing the old African queen. They didn't really start shooting till we were past. Oh, this <laughs> wonderful old boat. <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're full of water, miss. We're battered and we're busted. You see these bullet holes? One through the steam hose and two in the boiler. Uh, the engine stopped. Long since, miss. But we can drift into them shallows and I'll start pumping. No, no, I'll pump while you go ashore for logs. Well, that, that would save us time. Thank you, miss. Here now. You watch close yes. and I'll, I'll show you the trick. Of the I've got almost all the water pumped out, Mr. Allnut. Come and look. Uh, just let me see you set these logs down. Oh, you've worn yourself out, miss. Well, so have you. Well, if it's all right with you, we'd, we'd better stay here till morning. Hey. Hey, where'd they come from? Them flowers. Oh, I, I just couldn't resist them. I waded ashore and I, I picked them. Do you recognize them, Mr. Allnut? I, I've never seen them before. Well, I can't say that... I have either, miss. What if no one ever has? What if they don't even have a name? <laughs> well, name or not, miss, they sure are pretty. Here, put one in your hair. Catch. Oh, dear. Oh, I, I dropped it. No, 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 it. I'll get it. No, no, I can pick it up. I, uh... Oh. <laughs> well, well, look at us. Hands and knees in three inches of water looking for a flower. <laughs> I, I, I could laugh and... And, and cry, and I... Uh, oh, you... You kissed me. Yes, miss. I sure did, miss. You... You kissed me. Mr. 
Mr. Allnut. Mr. Allnut. Uh, dear. <coughs> oh. Oh. Hello, Rosie. You've been napping. Supper's ready. Rosie. Fancy you building a fire and all while I slept. Uh, uh, dear, what is your first name? Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Uh, give us a kiss, Rosie. Charlie. Charlie, dear. Uh, the more I look at this place, the prettier it gets. I expect it's about the prettiest place I've ever been to. Oh, not that I ain't all for going down the river, you understand. Oh, yes, Charlie, I know. Why, the sooner we blow up the old Louisa, the better. What I meant was I'd like to come back here someday. Then you think we can do it? Do it? Well, there's nothing a man can't do if he believes in himself. Never say die, that's my motto. I've had mis misgivings, Charlie. I was beginning to think that perhaps the, the whole thing was a mistake. How's that, miss? Ah, I mean, Rosie. <laughs> well, I... I had a moment of weakness. Oh, well, if you're feeling weak, Rosie, why a day or two here on shore won't make any difference. Oh, no, no. We'll go on and thank heaven for your strength, Charlie. Thank heaven. Well, Rosie girl, looks like there ain't nothing can stop the old queen. What about the propeller, Charlie? Turning nice as you please, Rosie. Why, we're going down the river just like uh, Anthony and Cleopatra in their barge. Oh, this couldn't happen, Rosie, if it hadn't been for you. Don't you feel proud of yourself? Certainly not. It's you, Charlie. It's all you. I don't think there's another man alive who could have done what you've done. Oh, I'll never forget the way you looked when we was going over them rapids. Head up, chin out, hair blowing in the wind. The living picture of a heroine. Oh, fancy me, a heroine. <laughs> oh, Charlie, you've lost your mind. Lost my heart, too, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, what a time we've had, Rosie. What a time. We'll never lack for stories to tell our grandchildren. Charlie, how much further do you suppose it is to the lake? Oh, well, there's no telling, Rosie. All depends on how much winding around this old river does. The river's changed, hasn't it? And that smell, why, it's, it's, it's like marigolds, stale marigolds. <laughs> Not a very good smell for a flower. They're, they're very pretty, though, marigolds. Rosie, look. Another bend? Oh, only that's all it was. Rosie, it's on all sides, nothing ahead but grass and papyrus, as far as you can see. But the river doesn't stop up there. It can't. Not according to the map, it can't, only how do you get through that stuff? Charlie, they're islands. Thousands of tiny islands. But where's the main channel among them? Uh, don't look like there is one, Rosie. Just a sea of grass and a forest of reeds. Well, I, I better cut the engine. Charlie. What are we going to do, huh? I don't know, Rosie. Get into it and take a look around, I suppose. Yes, dear, yes. But once we're in, Rosie... And the grass and them reeds close up in back of us. There'll be no going back. If anything happens, we'll just sit there till we go off our heads with fever. I... I know, Charlie. So, you pays your money and you takes your choice. Which is it, sweetheart? Straight ahead or turn around? Straight ahead, Charlie. We'll continue with Act Three of The African Queen in a few moments. Now it's with great pleasure I introduce our guest, the lovely Zsa Zsa Gabor, who will soon be seen in United Artists' great new Technicolor picture, Moulin Rouge. Hello, Erwin. You know, I've just returned from Paris. That's where the picture was filmed, because it's about the famous French painter Toulouse-Lautrec. Yes, and his genius and reckless way he defied convention make one of the screen's most dramatic stories. You know, José Ferrer plays the actor, plays, and now the new French star Colette Marchand plays the woman he loves, and I am Jean Avril, the famous singer and dancer in Toulouse-Lautrec's post. It's a spectacular picture, Zsa, Zsa In Moulin Rouge, producer John Huston captures all the flavor of Paris left bank 
and the colorful artist life. Well, Zsa, Zsa, you're a knockout in that red and white costume of Lautrec's famous poster. You set it off so perfectly with that creamy complexion of yours. It's a luxe complexion, I know. Of course, Ken. I'm devoted to the luxe toilet soap facials. And I really appreciate Lux for my bath, too, especially after making this picture. My dance number required 93 rehearsals. Was I tired? But my Lux bath completely refreshed me. Yes, a bath with creamy white Lux soap is the quickest beauty pickup ever. It treats you to so many luxuries in one. First, there's the rich, abundant lather Lux gives, even in hard water. Second, there's that delightful mildness of Lux, the way its gentle lather leaves your skin so soft. The luxury I love is the Lux perfume. It clings so long, yet it's so delicate. Flower fresh. Well, thank you, Jaja. Girls, try the big bath size Lux toilet soap. Do it tomorrow. Be Lux lovely for the holidays ahead. <laughs> we pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. The curtain rises on Act Three of The African Queen, starring Greer Gosson as Rose and Humphrey Bogart as Charlie. For days now, the journey of the African Queen has been halted. Across the breadth of the river, like a towering living wall, is a jungle of grass and reeds, an endless morass through which a thousand different channels twist and turn. And somewhere among them, Rose and Charlie are hopelessly lost. Charlie, please, let me pole for a while. Ah, uh, it's no use, Rosie. All the channels we've lost, all the squirming and turning we've done. This river's crazy, crazy as I am. Oh, Charlie. Sorry, old girl. Well, the only thing that will put the roses back in our cheeks is to... Get out of these reeds. I'll go over the side again. You pull, Rosie, and I'll push. Just keep her straight if you can, Rosie. Head her through the grass. There must... Your main channel... Mustn't there? It just... It just can't... Disappear. I'm sick of talking about it, Rosie. Or searching for it, or even... Charlie! Ah, oh, leeches, bloodsuckers. Oh, you're covered with them. Ooh, ooh, my legs, Rosie, my arms. Ooh, the little beggars. Pull them off me. Rosie, help me. Oh, yes, it's just no, 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 don't touch them. Don't. Ooh, salt, Rosie. Yes. You pull them off of their heads, stay in. Poison the blood. Get the salt. Yes, dear, ooh. yes. I'm... Ooh, pour it over me. Oh. Pour the salt over I me. I am, Charlie, I am. Ooh, they can't stand uh, the salt. Uh, See, Rosie. Uh, Look, they're, they're dropping off. Oh, my poor Charlie. Ooh, ooh. If there's anything in the world I hate, it's leeches. Oh, the filthy little devil. You're bleeding. Uh, but I, it ain't nothing. The salt will kill the poison. Well, here I go. Charlie, no. You're not going over again. No, no. Take the pole, Rosie. We'll try again. Rosie, you still awake, Rosie? I'm here, dear. I'm, I'm awful cold, Rosie. Hot and then cold. Chills and fever. Fine, fine specimen of a man I am, ain't I? You're the bravest man that ever lived. You just overdo, that's all. Try to sleep, and when you wake up, we'll be on our way again. Uh, on our way? Even if we had all our strength, we'd never get the boat off this mud. We're finished, Rosie. I know it. But I'm... I'm not one bit sorry I came. What I mean is... It was worth it. Dear Lord, we've come to the end of our journey... 
I pray for you to be merciful. Judge us not for our weakness, but for our love. And open the doors of heaven for Charlie and me. Rosie, it's over, sweetheart. It is. The storm's Charlie. over. Open your eyes, dear. It's daylight. Well, I, I wonder if I dreamed it, Charlie. If it was just a, a, a nightmare. I saw animals and, and birds running, screaming. Oh, it's nothing you dreamed, Rosie. Uh, I never seen such a storm. Charlie, what are you doing? You mustn't work, dear. You're not strong enough yet to. Rosie, I ain't doing anything. Open your eyes and see. I'm just sitting here next to you. But we're... we're moving. Moving? Moving? Rosie, look! Charlie, where are we? Rosie, dear, we're on the lake. <gasps> oh, the rain did it. It filled the channels. Look, the rain and the wind just lifted the old queen up and carried her over the mud. We've cleared the, re the weeds, Rosie. Oh, look back there. Oh, we couldn't have been a hundred yards from it last night when we gave up hope. Oh, Rosie, Rosie. Oh, let's try and build a fire if we can and get the engine started and go right out to the middle away from these reeds where we can, where we can breathe again. Sure, sweetheart, sure. We'll be out of here in a jiffy. Oh, this air... Oh, Charlie, it's wonderful. And wait this mess clears away. You see, the lake's as big as an ocean. And we're on it, Rosie. Oh, just to breathe again. Yeah, it's like... It's like... I know you don't approve, but it's like a shot of gin. Makes your blood race and your spirit soar. Oh, I'm sorry I poured out all that gin, Charlie. Oh, forget it, Rosie. And just to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll make you another cup of... What? What, Charlie? Rosie... There, to starboard. That's the Imperial German Navy. That's the Louisa. She's coming towards us, Charlie. we got to make a run for it. Back to the weeds. Take her around while I stoke the boiler. Yesterday, those weeds were our death. And, Charlie, today they're our salvation. Oh, I was so sure they'd seen us. Look at the size of her, Rosie. See your guns? Why did they stop at that little island, Charlie? Well, likely it's just routine or maybe just checking what the storm tore up. They'll be back again. You know how them Germans are. Methodical, yes. Yeah, that's them, all right. They lay down systems and they stick to them. Mondays, they're one place. Tuesday, someplace else. And Wednesday, they'll be back here. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, Rosie. You're thinking of the next time the Louisa comes back here, aren't you, old girl? How long will it take, Charlie, to get the torpedoes ready? Depends on the detonators. Well, I... I gotta rig up something. We'll manage it, Rosie. We'll manage it. Well, there they are, Rosie. Them's the detonators. Oh, Charlie, you're oh, what's wonderful. What's more, I think they'll work. Now, what about the cylinders? Well, with you helping, I'll lash them on each side of our bow. Only we can't set the detonators on until we're ready to set out. You see, they're kind of tricky, Rosie. We'll be working at night, Charlie. Can you do it in the dark? That's the case I have to. And you're, you're sure they'll come back with the Louisa? Well, let me see. Figuring both her speed and the size of this lake, my guess is she'll be back here tomorrow afternoon. And when she comes, we'll be ready. Tomorrow afternoon. Charlie, let's make the queen as clean as we can. Let's scrub her decks and polish her brass. <laughs> she ought to look her best, uh, representing as she does the Royal Navy. <laughs> I think I even got a flag around somewhere. Charlie. I will sail out of these reeds proud as a dreadnought. Rosie. Yes, Charlie? Uh, now, there ain't no use of both of us doing it. As you can plainly see, it's a, it's a one-man job. Oh, you couldn't be more right, Charlie, dear. Now, Rosie, I'm glad you agree. When the time comes, I'll put you off here on the east shore. You'll wait for me while I attend to the Louisa. Oh, certainly not. 
You're the one to put ashore. This whole thing was my idea, wasn't it? I'm the logical one to carry it out. Uh, Rosie, I'm surprised at you. You're a very sensible woman as a rule. Well, with two torpedoes hanging off our bow, she'll steer entirely different, let alone being half swamped. Didn't I steer us down the rapids? Well, I suppose she broke down out there. Wouldn't you look foolish? But me? She knows who her boss is, you bet that old engine does. Well, I suppose you're right. <laughs> Now, that's settled. Oh, no, no. I only meant it may be necessary for you to come along. Come along? Oh, no, you don't. You'll wait for me on the east shore. Who do you think you are, ordering me about? I'm the captain, that's who. And I ain't taking you along. You'd only be in my way. I suppose I was in your way, going down the rapids. Then what you said to me back there on the river was a lie. How you never could have done it alone. And how you had lost your, lost your heart and, and everything. And Oh, you liar! Oh, Charlie, Charlie, we're, we're having our first quarrel. <laughs> oh, Rosie, it's just that I, I can't bear the thought of you, well, supposing that anything should happen, not that anything will. Don't you understand, Charlie? I, I wouldn't want to go on without you. Oh, Rosie, all right. It'll be you at the tiller. And me at the engine, just like it was from the start. I knew you'd see it, Charlie, dear. Thank you. There she is, Rosie. That's the Louisa, right on time. There's no smoke from her oh, stacks. The wind, sweetheart, is blowing the smoke fast as it comes out. I don't like this wind. Yeah, me neither, Rosie. It's going to storm. But if it storms tonight, there'll be less chance of them seeing us. Maybe a storm would be a blessing, Charlie. That's the way to look at it, Rosie, old girl. Now let you and me get them started on them detonators. We're not making any time, Rosie. Something's wrong. I can't steer, Charlie. We're taking too much water in the bow. It's them torpedoes weighing us down. Charlie, look. Those waves. Hang on, Rosie. Charlie, the torpedoes. They're torn loose. It's worse than that. We're sinking, Rosie. The tiller's gone. Something broke. Everything's broke. Grab the preserver, Rosie, and then jump. Charlie. Charlie. Rosie. You, I will remind you just once more, you are a prisoner aboard the steamship Louisa of His Imperial Majesty's Navy. Yeah, yeah, I know. You will tell us the truth. Now, what is your nationality? French, Belgian, British? Yeah. Yes, what? Uh, uh, British. What were you doing in these waters? Uh, uh fishing. <laughs> yeah, fishing off the island. You're a spy for the British. Well, do you deny this? I... I told you I was fishing. That's just the gesamte Beweismaterial der Anklage, Herr Kapitän. Uh, fahren Sie fort mit der Verteidigung. Obviously, you're lying, but it does not matter. This court will sentence you to be hanged. Oh, scheint weiß zu sein. You, there was a woman with you. Rosie! You will answer my question. Bring Sie die Frau her. Rosie! Charlie! Who is this woman? I don't know. You called her by name. I thought she was somebody else. Charlie! Who are you? Miss Rose Sayre. What were you doing on the lake? I ain't told them nothing, Rosie. Silence! What were you doing on the lake? We were boating. <laughs> As your fellow prisoner is about to learn, the penalty for lying to us is death. Charlie! Very well, then. We came here to... Rosie, no! To sink this ship. Charlie, dear, at least... Let's have the pleasure of telling them. I don't you believe her, Your Honor. She's touched, you know. Fever. <laughs> and just how, Fräulein, did you propose to sink the König and Louisa? Why, with torpedoes. Torpedoes? <laughs> yes, Mr. Allnut made them. Made them? Amazing. <laughs> Charlie, tell them how you made the torpedoes. <laughs> well, you, you see, what I did was I, I took the heads off uh, two cylinders of oxygen. I filled them up with live explosives, about 200 weight. Now, that was easy enough, but it was the detonators took some doing. And you know what I used? Cartridges and nails and blocks of soft wood. Go on, please. <laughs> then I took the two cylinders and hung them port and starboard in the bow of the African Queen. So it's when we rammed you, poof! And where is the African Queen? She sank last night in the storm. 
Too bad. I should like to have seen those torpedoes. Perhaps you will. They'll still be floating around somewhere nearby. Yeah, they could still sink this ship, Rosie. Enough of this torpedo nonsense. Es ist ganz klar, dass die beiden Spione sind. Ich schlage vor, wir geben in fünf Minuten Frist, diese Lügen zurückzuziehen. You have five minutes in which to reconsider. Tell us the truth, or you will both be hanged. We've told the truth, haven't we, Charlie? Yeah. And we, uh, we got a favor to ask you, Honor. Well? Well, uh, uh, you're the captain, I guess. I am. Well, uh, uh, then you could marry us. Oh, Charlie. What a lovely idea. What kind of craziness is this? Come on, Captain. It won't even take five minutes. And it'll mean such a lot to the lady. If you wish it. Absolutely. Very well. Uh, what are the names again? Charles. Rosie. Huh? Uh, Rose. That is then a Bible off them bread hinter them schreibtisch. Ja, Herr Lieutenant. Ich sehe sie. Bring sie her. Charlie, look. A Bible. Look at me, both of you. Do you, Charles, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Yes, sir. Do you, Rose, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Then by the authority vested in me by His Imperial Majesty Kaiser Wilhelm II, I pronounce you are man and wife. Proceed with the execution. Ab mit den beiden Gefangenen nach Achtern und los mit der Hinrichtung! Charlie, my husband. Rosie, Rosie. You will follow me now. At once. Charlie, the torpedoes. Is all not? Can you keep swimming? Oh, yes. I never felt so good in my life. We blew her up, Johnny. <laughs> I guess we did, Rosie. The wreckage of the African Queen, that did it. They ran the Louisa right into it. How do you feel, Mr. Allnut? Pretty good for an old married man. <laughs> I'm all turned around, Charlie. Which way is the East Shore? The way we're swimming, old girl. There was a bold fisherman set sail from off Pimlico to catch the Pimble bold piggy, piggy and the gay macaroon. In a moment, our stars will return. Are you blaming stocking runs on the stockings themselves? Well, perhaps you're making a big mistake. Yes, look, the blame may belong to the way you wash stockings. You may be wearing out your stockings in the wash. Harsh washings with strong wash day products were never meant for delicate nylons. Cobweb sheer nylons need delicate care, really special care. Always wash your stockings gently in pure Lux flakes. Nylons thrive on gentle washings in safe Lux lather. You see, Lux flakes melt completely into a silky cleansing foam. And each gentle washing in Lux has a special action that keeps nylon threads strong as new. Washing after washing, wearing after wearing. Lux flakes care double stocking wear. That's like getting an extra pair of nylons with every pair you buy. Start giving your stocking safe Lux flakes care tomorrow. 95% of stocking manufacturers recommend Lux. Lux Flakes are guaranteed by Lever Brothers Company. Now here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are coming forward for a well-deserved curtain call. Humphrey Bogart and Greer Goff. <laughs> we certainly su suffered every step of the way with you two on the trip of the African Queen. Uh, Irving, I, uh, I remember another safari full of hardships that you and I made... Uh, Quite a long time ago. A safari bogey? What, to Africa? I don't know, to Palm Springs. Okay. <laughs> it was bogey's first picture in Hollywood, and I was the director. We went on location to Palm Springs, and it was 120 in the shade. Only there was no shade. <laughs> and you should have seen bogey in his first love scenes. <laughs> I, I couldn't see the girl for the water dripping in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't sound as if you were having exactly a circus. No, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, but my latest picture is, uh, just happens to be Battle Circus, <laughs> co-starring June Allison. I'll get into it. See, I've been, 
I've been working at your home studio, Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Well, I congratulate you, Bogey. You know we make only the very best pictures over there. We mentioned one on the Lux Radio Theater recently, Plymouth Adventure, starring Spencer Tracy, Gene Tierney, Van Johnson, and Leo Gann. Oh, I, uh, I don't think Greer would like that. It's all about the pilgrims leaving England and sailing for America on the Mayflower. Oh, we English think it's a great idea. We've been doing it ever since. <laughs> We're always glad to welcome our English cousins, particularly you l lovely actresses with those beautiful complexions. Well, thank you. We're glad to adopt your way of caring for those complexions with Lux Soap. I think it's wonderful. And you'll both think next week's show is wonderful. It's such a great story that it's been made into a picture five different times. And we're going to bring you the inspiring 20th Century Fox version of Victor Hugo's immortal classic, La Miserable. And from the original cast, we have the lovely Deborah Paget and that fine actor, Robert Newton. And in the unforgettable role of Jean Valjean, another great Academy Award winner, Ronald Coleman. Well, that'll be a swell show. Sitting. Good night, Irving. Good night. Good night, and happy holidays. Now, here's Ken Carpenter with news about mouth health. Ken? Millions of Americans have found that Chlorodent toothpaste does more to give you a clean, fresh mouth than any other dentifrice. And now here is proof that Chlorodent gives you a healthy mouth, too. Wholly in the interest of child health, Chlorodent was tested under the supervision of dentists at Father Flanagan's famous boy's town in Nebraska. In this research, Chlorodent and a fine white toothpaste were used regularly by different groups of youngsters. And in just 60 days, dentists found that three-fourths of the boys using Chlorodent showed dramatic improvement in mouth health. Chlorodent was actually proved twice as effective as the fine white toothpaste for quickly reducing acute gingivitis, a common mouth ailment. And that's another reason why Lever Brothers Company unconditionally guarantees that Chlorodent does more for you than any other toothpaste, white, ammoniated, or chlorophyll, to give you a clean, fresh, healthy mouth. Make sure you get the toothpaste used in this boy's town research. Ask for Chlorodent. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman, Deborah Paget, and Robert Newton in La Miserable. This is Irving Cummings saying good night to you from Hollywood. Part in our cast tonight were John Dodsworth as the Reverend and Harold Ironforth and Hans Conried as the German officers. Our radio play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. Trust Silver Dust. Trust Silver Dust. Trust Silver Dust to give you more for your money with a goodwill offer that's really a honey. Trust Silver Dust. New improved Silver Dust Wonder Bubble Suds for laundry and dishes now makes you this amazing goodwill offer. Inside every large size Silver Dust, you get, as an extra, a genuine Canon face cloth. It's big, soft, fluffy, lovely pastel colors, worth up to 15 cents. Remember, in large size silver dust, you get this genuine Canon face cloth as an extra. Try silver dust. See how it safely digs out dirt, gets clothes cleaner, speeds dishwashing, kind to your hands. Yes, silver dust, a great washing product with a Canon face cloth inside, gives you more for your money than any other washing product. That's guaranteed. Get the large size box of silver dust with the big cannon face cloth as an extra today. Lever Brothers Company unconditionally guarantees the quality and performance of Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes, Chlorid and Toothpaste, and Silver Dust, or your money refunded. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Les Mis Rob, starring Ronald Coleman, Deborah Paget, and Robert Newton. This is the CBS Radio Network.